Hello, it's Ice Flame, and today I'm going to showcase my latest redstone project, a new multi-floor elevator. This elevator supports up to 15 floors, and each floor can be spaced any even number of blocks apart, given that it's at least four. Over here I have another example where the floors are spaced 10 blocks apart, but keep in mind that floors don't have to be spaced the same number of blocks apart. They could be 10, and then 8, and then 4, and then 6, for example. This elevator also includes a calling system that brings the elevator cabin to any floor with the press of a button. But before I get into too much detail, let's demonstrate what it actually feels like to use the elevator. So let's say you're on the first floor, um, and you want to go to floor 9. Uh, you can set this lectern to whatever page number you want, which would correspond to that floor number. Then you step in the elevator and right click this note block. This will send a signal to the elevator telling it to move to whatever floor you selected. As you can see, it's pretty fast. And when you reach the floor, you can select another floor, or you can move to another floor and call the elevator. Uh, so if I'm on floor 3 and I call the elevator from floor 9, it will send the elevator all the way down to this floor. There we go. So how does it work? Well, when the user inputs the desired destination floor, the system calculates the distance between your current floor and that desired floor. And when the user activates this note block, it feeds that value as a signal strength into this yellow circuit. The yellow circuit then transmits that signal strength either up or down, depending on whether the desired floor is above or below the current floor. As the signal moves, it activates the white circuit, which is what physically moves the elevator using slime and honey blocks. The signal is subtracted from every time a new floor is reached, and when it hits zero, the elevator stops moving. But how is the cabin actually lifted or lowered? Well, if you pretend this is the bottom of the cabin, and it needs to be pushed up, these pistons will sequentially lower, raise, and raise again in such a way for the next one to meet it and lift it further. For example, watch what happens when I send the elevator up a floor from here. Each piston basically passes the block onto the next piston, and each are responsible for lifting the cabin up two blocks. Block is lowered, lifted, lifted again, and then by the time it's lifted here, this this uh, slime block is already lowered, so it will raise the block two more blocks. And then by the time this uh, piston is up, this piston will be down, and then it will go back up, lifting this block up two more, and etc. That's how it works. And this logic applies symmetrically for pushing the elevator down instead. I want to give credit to JL2579 for coming up with this idea to lift the cabin this way, where pistons pass blocks to each other. I'll post a link to both his YouTube channel and the video in which he makes his own elevator using this technique in the description. Finally, I'll explain how you can call an elevator to any floor. When the user presses the call elevator button, it sends two signals to the lime circuit. One is instant, but one is delayed by one redstone tick, or a tenth of a second, per floor it passes through. The lime circuit then uses the disparity between these timings to deduce which floor you called from, and it will send a signal to the, through the yellow circuit accordingly. It should be noted that when the user calls the elevator, the signal moving the elevator starts from the extremes, i.e. the highest or lowest floor, rather than from where the elevator currently is. This means that calling the elevator to the fifth floor takes just as long when the elevator starts from the fourth floor as it does when it starts from the first floor. There's just one flaw with the design that I should quickly mention. In multiplayer, it is possible for two players to call the elevator at the exact same time. There's already a system in place designed to prevent users from calling the elevator while it's already moving, but it's delayed, so there's still a slim chance this happens. Even if it does happen, there's only a slight chance it actually breaks the elevator anyway, but if it does, I've installed a reset button that closes all the doors and sends the elevator to the first floor. I know I didn't go into as much detail on this build as I typically do with other builds, but my goal was to keep this video short and sweet. A world download will be in the description if you want to try this out for yourself, or maybe dig deeper into all the details. And if you do have questions, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it as soon as possible. If you do plan to build this in your own world, it may be useful to refer to these color purpose indicators that show you how certain parts of the system should repeat as you build the elevator. Also, when you create the lecterns, be sure that the books in the lecterns have exactly 15 pages, even if your elevator has less than 15 floors. This is to ensure that the signal strength outputted actually matches the floor you want to go to. And if your elevator does have less than 15 floors, any input greater than the total number of floors will send you to the highest available floor. With that being said, have a great day and I'll see you next time.